Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to be talking about an episode from season three, The Caretakers, when Grandma and Grandpa move out of the Walton house. Early in the episode, John says to Grandpa that Grandpa looks a little tired and that he should maybe take it easy, try not to do so much. Grandpa resents this because he feels like John is uh, telling him he's old, he's useless. Um, John's just worried because Grandpa recently had a heart attack right around his birthday and the doctor said he should take it easy. Grandpa just doesn't agree with that and just thinks that he's being pushed out. Meanwhile, Grandma is also feeling uh, like she's not necessary and she isn't appreciated. I, Mary Ellen, comes home all excited because I've won some sort of a prize where I got some makeup items. Grandma thinks this is ridiculous and the children are all grabbing snacks and Grandma thinks they should wait till dinner and Olivia sort of sides with the children and Grandma says, why do you always side with against me? And um, Olivia just kind of brushes it off, but Grandma's really taking this to heart. So both Grandma and Grandpa are feeling just overlooked and underappreciated. Grandpa goes to visit his friend, Henry Townsend, played by actor Dan Priest. Henry's wife passed away not too long ago, and so he's feeling the emptiness of the house with her gone, and he is considering taking a job someplace away from Walton's Mountain, but needs someone to be a caretaker for his property while he is away working, and it would be something that was a paid position. So he mentions this to Grandpa, and Grandpa says he'll keep his ears open. Now, all of this is what we would call a setup. This is part of setting up the story. So typically when you are doing kind of an outline for a script, for a story, there's certain aspects to it, and one of them is the setup. You need to sort of set up the various different asp aspects of the story that lead to what the story is going to be about. So in this case, we have grandma and grandpa both upset and feeling pushed out and neglected and, and um, unappreciated. And then you have someone else who is in need of someone to be paid to take care of a house. So we as an audience now understand what direction this story is potentially going. So you, if you look at films or television episodes or something like that, in most cases, you will see this sort of format, this, this kind of um, formula that plays out. Now, the content of that is going to be different from show to show because every story is going to be a little bit different. But there is almost always the need to set up what's going on. You establish who the characters are and what the situation is. I was fascinated by this... Um, what looks like a flower bin in the Walton kitchen. Now, some of you might be really familiar with this sort of an item, but I certainly was not. Here is Olivia, and she's pouring probably flour into this bin, and then I can see that down below the cupboard that this is in, that there seems to be a spout. So I'm assuming that then she could go and she could just um, like release the flour from below and measure it and use it for baking. I thought this was an ingenious sort of a of a of a thing to have in your kitchen, but certainly my mother never had anything like that when I was growing up, so I had never seen it before. When Grandpa is at loose ends and trying to figure out what to do with himself, he wanders into John Boy's room. John Boy is writing. He is working on an essay for school, and someone had asked me at one point when. John Boy was writing in his journal or, or whatever, what was he really writing? Was he writing actual words or sentences or was he just sort of writing gibberish? And I believe that most of the time uh, he was writing real words, real sentences, whether it was like sometimes when, when you could hear his narration when he was talking, he very well might have been writing what the narration was, but maybe not. Um, obviously, if you can see the words, then you're going to know and he is going to need to write what's there. But uh, it's always a question when one needs to be reading or writing in a scene, just how engaged you are in what's going on. And it reminds me of um, uh, sort of an error of mine one time. I was doing a play and there was a long scene where I was 
barely involved. The other three people in the scene were talking and I was sitting doing a crossword puzzle or something like that. Well, I was on stage and to some degree or another, I might be engaged in doing this crossword puzzle. And one night I got very involved in doing the crossword puzzle and missed a line cue. All of a sudden there was silence and I was like, oh shoot, that's me. <laughs> and I had this moment of panic and trust me from that time forward, I did not get quite so engrossed in the crossword puzzle. Having finally had enough, Grandpa decides that he and Grandma are going to take this job as caretakers for Mr. Townsend. So Grandpa is going to pack and he goes to this cupboard and that is clearly meant to be a closet in this case and pulls out a suitcase. Now, uh, this was the only door that uh, you can see in the bedroom. And this door often got used as a closet door in the grandparents' room. You saw it occasionally, but uh, it was also the only door and that sort of mystery door that went between the grandparents' room and the living room. And on a couple of occasions, we saw someone, grandma came out of the door one time from her bedroom. And in one case, someone went through that door. It was Paul Northridge's father in the episode where Aaron and Paul were getting married and his father entered the grandparents' room where Paul was getting ready. So this was a sort of a versatile mystery door because in this case it was being used as a closet door, but sometimes it was used on rare occasion as an actual entrance door between the living room and the grandparents' room. The Waltons were not without their community gossips. And in this case, uh, Cora Beth and Mrs. Brimmer are gossiping in Ike Godsey's store about what's going on around the Walton house. So Cora Beth, of course, was a major gossip, but I think I saw less of Mrs. Brimmer <laughs> being a gossip. Everyone in the family is trying to resolve this um, upset between particularly between John and Grandpa, because Grandpa doesn't want to back down. And John thinks Grandpa's being ridiculous and that he does need to take it easy. And Grandma's caught in the middle and they're being told that, you know, no one should go visit and that Grandpa needs to stop being so stubborn. Uh, it's just kind of a mess. Um, and no one's happy about it and everyone wants it resolved. John has a contract that he needs to get finished up. And this was part of the problem because he goes and he hires extra help. Um, and then they hire Easy Jackson, who is a complete disaster and is wasting more time and more money than is worth the trouble. So finally, John does go to talk to Grandpa and admits that Easy is a complete disaster, that how much he needs Grandpa's help. And, you know, John Boy's been helping, but he's in school. So it gives everybody a way out and it's the truth you know grandpa is very valuable so grandma and grandpa can't wait to get back and they do come back home and the family is reunited there's also a good solution uh, for the caretaker position because john doesn't want easy working around the lumber again because he's he's just he's breaking boards and he's costing john money so grandpa becomes very handy in convincing Easy that he would be doing Grandpa a big favor by being the caretaker for the Townsend property and that uh, Grandpa can handle it and it's a lot of work and but you know he thinks Easy could do it so Grandpa is very clever in the way he sort of resolves the situation with Easy and there you have it that was the episode The Caretaker from season three. I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more of your questions in another segment of Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.